And we're live. Hi. Hey guys. So. What's up? We're having YouTube problems again. Again. So we're just Facebook streaming. And we're Bobsy Twins today. Yay. We planned that, by the way. <laughs> you, you asked me what I was wearing. I did, I did. And I was like, I'm wearing my Golden Dawn shirt. So. I said, well, one of us is going to have to change. We didn't plan it. You copied me. I did. I'm a follower. So, <laughs> now that we got that out of the way. Um, so yeah, uh, yesterday we kind of did an introduction, who we are a little bit, uh, who Yield Magic Shop is, was, and is becoming. And uh, today we are talking about the Golden Dawn. Um, I'm guessing this is a topic we will probably address more than once. Yes. As it's something that we're both intimately familiar with. Um, and it is my primary magical path. Um, Sora Mim does some other stuff as well, but is a large part of her practice. So yes. something we both know a lot about, um, and have, I've, I've been working for 20 plus years and on Golden Dawn yeah. magic specifically. Yeah. Yes. I've been a member of the Golden Dawn for nine, nine years. Yeah. Goodness. Almost a decade. Almost a decade of my life. Um, so yes, it is something that we're both very, um, quite literally married to. And we are very much live our life with, with a Golden Dawn perspective. And because it is such a big part of our lives, I kind of wanted to go into a little bit about what the Golden Dawn is and discuss some of the common... And what it isn't. ...and misconceptions, exactly. And who it isn't. That's another Ooh. big thing. Well, we'll first thing, bringing up some names here. But. First thing I would say, Golden Dawn is not a religion. It is not a belief system. It requires a belief in a supreme being, some kind of entity that's greater than yourself that you can work with. Other than that, there's not really a whole lot of requirements uh, as far as belief goes. Is that supreme being belief? Is that gendered yep. in any way? Although, some of the wording in the rituals tends to be a little bit gendered. Um, I, I guess the, the most common phrase you hear in Golden Dawn ritual as far as a deity goes. Sorry, I'm going to adjust the camera here a little bit since we only have one camera going. Um, is Lord of the Universe. And I know some groups have eliminated that and substituted something else in for it. In our particular order, we do not. We use the term Lord of the Universe, but when you are wording that as Lord of the Universe, even though Lord is masculine, you can, you know, it's it's however you view that supreme being in your mind that, that you're working with. So if somebody were to struggle with um, praying to a Lord of the Universe, but they still wanted to work some Golden Dawn magic, how, how would... Well, they could Something change it. Work that. I mean, we've even told people in our own order that they can do however they want to in their personal mm -hmm. practice. In open temple, it's done as Lord of the Universe. Um, but that's that's us. Other people mm -hmm. do it different ways, and that's totally fine. Um, I think for me, um, part of the power within using those those same names and phrases. Um, is that it, it does hold that power within it. It does kind of carry it through the egregore itself. Um, and, and I think that you can kind of make it what you want to. That's what I think that has really drawn me specifically to the Golden Dawn is that it is a system of practice and not belief. It's not a religion. So you can have a whole bunch of different um, ideas of what the supreme being is for you and kind of go with it from there. But by names and images, so we do want to save some of the wording and some of the phrases because yep. it does hold power. Definitely. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, not a system of belief, but a system of practice. That's one of the common things we say. Um, and as long as you can, whatever your beliefs may be, as long as you can reconcile them with the practices that are contained in the Golden Dawn, then you're good. You're golden. So... I sense this is going to be a and a Who is the Golden Dawn? We get a lot of questions on um, who we as Golden Dawn magicians are affiliated with. 
and who we're not affiliated with. Um, and I think that that's something that we kind of want to address as well. Um, I, I do kind of want to name some names, but I kind of don't want to name names at the same so time. So if you were to Google <laughs> Golden Dawn, you're going to get a website of a particular person that is going to look extremely salesy and huh. very much like a pitch man. We're not affiliated with that particular group. Um, we can leave it at that. Um, this person is really interesting and not somebody that we are affiliated with, nor do we want to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Um, but there are a lot of other really great, reputable um, Golden Dawn temples out there that I think are worthy of looking into. Even ones that we're not affiliated with are, are great ones. Uh, there's a couple in Denver. There are some in Florida. Some of our friends who are um, up in the Seattle area as well. North Carolina. North Carolina. Florida. There's a, the reality is... We've been to a lot of conferences and a lot of different things, and we have uh, friendships with people that are in lots of other Golden Dawn orders besides the one that we belong to, and uh, we're we're all friends. Uh, and Most of us, anyway. yeah, we don't we don't have you know, there's no enmity between us, and there's no my order's better than yours. Um, in fact, there's a lot of compilation books that have been coming out. For a while now, um, what's the latest one called? The Light Extended. Uh, Nick Farrell puts out the Hermetic Journals, or mm -hmm. has I don't think he's put them out anymore. That are that are just compilations of Golden Dawn materials written by numerous Golden Dawn people, and all compiled into one book. And mm -hmm. most of the people that are in those books that I know, uh, I've had conversations with, and we've been on friendly terms, and uh, even shared information that that you know, probably 15, 20 years ago, yeah. people would not have shared right. with other people. So um, there's definitely some growth in friendship between, sorry, we're in, we're in Arizona right now and it's a little warm. Uh, it's a hot day today. It's uh, 85 right now and we yeah. just came out of the heat of the day. So it's hot. It's been a warm one today. Yeah, sorry if I'm a little sweaty, guys. But anyway, um, you know, I've worked with a lot of people. I've worked with uh, people literally from all around the world. So our mem presented at the Magical Women's Conference in London last summer and met a lot of people there. So, you know, a lot of people see infighting amongst the Golden Dawn. And, mm. uh, you know, does that happen? Occasionally. It's usually limited to a very small group. And most of us get along. It's always the same bad players, too. Yeah. So Most of us get along and, and share and chat, and it's no problem. Usually. What else? <laughs> so I heard the Golden Dawn was founded by oh Aleister Crowley. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, the Golden Dawn was not founded by Crowley. Um... That's a big one we get, actually. Crowley was a member. A lot of people who have that misconception. Yeah. So, who was Crowley? Well, Aleister Crowley was a member of the Golden Dawn. He was initiated uh, in, I think, in London, and went through all of the all of the first order grades, and then, yeah, there's there's. A split that happened and some stuff that we really don't want to dig into but suffice to say I think from a Golden Dawn perspective and nothing against Crowley I mean he, he put out some brilliant work um, along with some not so brilliant work in my opinion um, but uh, he's really a footnote in the Golden Dawn um, he was a member and some of the events that happened around his membership uh, may have been part of one of the schisms of, of the order breaking up into different parts and that was unfortunate but the reality is as far as material goes nothing that we do really came from Crowley. Um, he founded his own order um, sort of what's the word I'm looking for here sort of uh, 
repackaged, uh, repackaged the, the OTO into his own thing and then founded the AA and, and some of the materials they use came from the Golden Dawn and he pulled from a lot of other sources. So uh, there's, a, there's a whole stream there that's, that's totally separate and different from the Golden Dawn. Um, so what about Bennett? <laughs> Hello, Alan. What about Bennett? Um, Bennett was uh, Crowley's yeah, sponsor well, into the order and sort of his mentor um, for quite a while. And uh, supposedly a lot of the materials that Crowley actually had that were sort of higher level teachings, Crowley may have gotten from Bennett. But, you know, the thing about the Golden Dawn, when you get into, t when you dig into its history, and I am not a professional historian in any way. I'm a casual historian. I love reading about the history of the Golden Dawn. I love reading about our order and where it came from and the things that they went through because in our order we've learned from some of the things that they, they did in the past and we've tried to avoid some of those same pitfalls. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's fun to talk about, but the reality is it all happened well over a hundred years ago. Um, and at least the start of the order did, it was founded in 1888. So talking about a fair amount of time ago. And while there's a fair amount of written record, there's a lot of stuff that's not written and you get into a lot of conjecture and you, you can get into a lot of back and forth and know, oh, well, somebody has a paper about X, Y, Z. Well, I don't have that paper. So who's right? Who's wrong? You can get into a lot of back and forth and on who that. Who has the original documents and who has yeah. more of a claim to original documents. Um, and I, I prefer to focus on doing the work and forging friendships and, and allies with other people rather than trying to argue and figure out who's inviting. got a better path or who's got more papers. Who's right. Um, but it, it definitely is an interesting history. Uh, in the Golden Dawn, there's a lot of things that happened, a lot of things that went on. Um, and they, they were, in a way, the Golden Dawn was uh, ahead of its time in some respects. They were one of the first occult bodies that allowed men and women on, e on an equal basis. Um, yeah. And in fact, while the three founders of it were men and were Freemasons, uh, within ten, 10 years of the Order's founding, many of the temples were actually, uh, had females as chiefs of the temples and... Um, you know, so, so the women played a large part. In fact, uh, uh, help me out her name, Women of the Golden Dawn, Greer. Um, Mary Kay Greer? Mary, Mary Greer wrote a book called Women of the Golden Dawn, and she went Excellent into book. all of the women uh, that played a large part in the original order. That was actually Sora Mim's topic that she yeah. presented in London on, was Women of the Golden Dawn, Past, Present, and Future. Um, so it definitely was a a uh, sort of a gender barrier uh, bashing For sure. or tearing down of some of those gender walls. When you consider Victorian England was very much Freemasonry was everywhere. Um, it was a men's club. It was a fraternity. Women were not allowed. Um, and, and that was the mentality of that Victorian England. And then you had the Golden Dawn come along and, and uh, Blavatsky's Theosophy who said we're going to allow men and women equally. And they both did, and that was that was uh, really uh, had a, a large effect, I think, on the occult community at large uh, after that. So, uh, so then, in front of the fan. I another question that we get quite a bit is. Oh boy, here we go. I know. What's the next one? Well, and we get this a lot. We have a lot of people just kind of curious about what the Golden Dawn is. Uh, so, how do you find some good ways to practice Golden Dawn magic? Um, there are a lot of schools of thought with regard to astral initiations or distance learning opportunities for Golden Dawn groups, um, which is well and good and great. The Ciceros have um, their self-initiation book, which is fantastic and an excellent resource. Um, being a member of a Golden Dawn order and fraternity, I, I do think that there's something missing there in putting yourself through all of those different types of ordeals that an initiation inherently brings. Definitely. Um, sadly, not everybody has close access to a temple. Um, and I suppose that just comes down to what your, uh, what your level of dedication is. And that's not to say it's bad if somebody doesn't want to travel. That's just not their chosen uh, 
their chosen path or their chosen means. But we have people in our order that have flown in from, goodness, from Florida to Denver, um, from uh, Utah, from California, um, gosh, where else, from Kansas, Wyoming. Uh, we've had people come from almost all over the United States to come to Denver where our mother temple is to receive initiations and to progress and many of them have now moved on and have opened sanctuaries and temples in their local towns yeah um so it's it's been a growth for our order but it's also you know speaks to some people's level of dedication and commitment to a particular path if you don't have a temple by you um you definitely can still work the golden dawn material i find in working with people that oftentimes progress is much slower when you hit that wall where you have questions and and you're not quite sure how to proceed it can be really tough to find somebody who's open enough to share that with you that does belong to an order so there's a lot of stumbling blocks when it comes to that so I brought up uh, the self-initiation book by the Cicero's I'm not a huge fan of the self-initiation part of it but as a book it's a fantastic resource yeah. um, they go into and we're gonna we'll have a list of books in the post below um, yeah. we'll, we'll go over those really quickly before we close but self-initiation into the Golden Dawn tradition is a great book because they bring in a lot of outside sources explain a lot of the backgrounds explain a lot of you know why this is in the golden dawn where it came from what its background is so you get a little bit more of the why as the opposed to just yeah. some of the some of the rituals and and where those deities come from mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of really good information there and if you can pass the tests at the end of each one of the chapters yes. of that book you're good because those questions some of those questions are really tough. really in depth yep. which is fantastic it's great um but alan asked what is something that really happens in a modern Golden Dawn Temple. Um, a lot of that is really just support in seeing how ritual is done. I know a lot of times when you're met with a ritual on paper, you kind of have something in your head or if you watch YouTube channels about other people doing ritual work, uh, it's easy to try to emulate some of what other people do. And um, in being in a modern Golden Dawn Temple, it's easy to get complacent within your own work. So it's nice to see how other people even say the words, say the names, vibrate the names inside a temple atmosphere. So just watching how somebody else does a laburp, for example, is huge um, as, as, as opposed to doing it by yourself and just trying to figure out what that feels like, what it should sound like, what it should look like. How big do you draw your pentagrams, for example? I've seen people these little tiny pentagrams and it's like no you are trying to cleanse the space so you want this to be big and dramatic there is a level of theater within golden dawn and i think that that part is huge too and you lose a lot of that if you're not part of the temple yeah and you know in our order we also have uh rituals for healing which we've done quite a few times for both members and non-members uh, who have requested it we have rituals for protection both of, as a group and individuals. Um, we have a fair amount of other rituals that we do as a group uh, that are difficult to do by yourself. Um, so that's another focus in modern temples. And really the point of a temple existing in, in my mind for the most part is aside from fraternity and, and being able to know and work with like-minded folks uh, is initiation. Um, that's really what a temple exists for. The Golden Dawn has very specific energies and a very specific method of working with those energies and that is designed to be done in a group setting to channel those energies in and then to project them into the candidate to awaken various uh, various powers and energies within that candidate. So uh, that typically only happens in a group ritual setting in the Golden Dawn. So. Um, I think initiation is, is the number one thing. Mm -hmm. Some of these other rituals uh, certainly have more power and, and efficacy when done as a group. Um, and then fraternity, that's, that's a huge part of it. Um, most of our lifelong friends that we have, we've met through the order um, and uh, continue to do so. So, uh, Alan, I'm not sure if you're still on. Does that answer your question? Are you looking for more? Let us know. Yeah. Um, Having a mentor, at least the way that we run our temple, uh, is a little bit different in 
in how much we are really involved with each individual initiate. Everybody has a mentor, everybody has a point person to go to, but at the same time there's also the greater uh, ritual hold that everybody can talk with. We're all very close friends as well. Uh, I'm not sure how other temples or orders run, but we are all very close. You bet, John. Alan. Alan, Alan. John. Alan John. <laughs> Yeah, so um, for those who are looking for some more information, we can put some more links below too, along with all of our books that we recommend for Golden Dawn Magic. Um, this has just been something that I've noticed a lot of people question us a lot about and in, in what it really is. So if there are any other questions, let us know. Before we dig into books, let's talk about giveaways. Giveaways, yay. So we have a couple of things to give away uh, for this live stream, Golden Dawn related. Um, and what we're going to do is put names in a hat and draw them uh, after the broadcast. Mm -hmm. And what we want you guys to do is comment on the video and share it. If you comment and share the video, then your name will go into the hopper to receive one of these. Uh, the first one we've got is a bracelet. I should model it. You should model it. it looks so much nicer. Be a hand model. It's upside down. I know. Um, <laughs> It has the Golden Dawn Cross and Triangle and says, the light shineth in the darkness. Um, it's been burned into the leather on this guy. Um, so we have that for one. And the other item that we have, um, I made this. It's just a, uh, it's a simple little altar brick uh, with the Golden Dawn Cross and Triangle on it. Um, it has been, I, uh, I did wood stain uh, rather than painting the wood itself, so it's an ebony wood stain, and then I painted the cross and triangle on there after uh, after wood burning it on there. So uh, a couple little giveaways we're going to do there, um, and we'll do we'll do that uh, probably tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We'll do it on the sh on the uh, live stream or Monday. Monday. We'll do it on the live stream Monday. That'll give you guys this weekend to uh, watch, share, comment. comment, and share. Um, yeah, comment, buddy. Like, share, one, exciting. Whatever. All that fun stuff. And we'll keep doing some more giveaways on some random stuff. Again, having a shop for so long, we have a lot of fun stuff to give stuff. away. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, the so other talk. thing. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, you go. I was going to talk books. You. <laughs> yeah, let's talk books. Okay. So number one book, if you're interested in the Golden Dawn um, and you don't know much about it, The Essential Golden Dawn by uh, Chick and Sandra Tabitha Cicero. Um, it is a fantastic book for like a 10,000 foot view, gives you a nice overview of the whole system, a few basic rituals and meditations that you can work. Um, just a great book to give you an introduction to the system itself. Uh, so that would be, I, I really would recommend that for anybody, um, but definitely if you're newer to the Golden Dawn and don't know a whole lot about it. Definitely. What about Regardi? Yep. <laughs> Second one, uh, two books by Rigardi, uh, The Golden Dawn, which is uh, sort of, the, it's the one that was published in 1938 originally. We call it The Black Brick. Um, it's the one you always see with the sunset on. It's actually in a new version now, so yeah, it has a real nice bars, flowery but... cover with a cross and triangle. Um, seventh edition, I believe it's in. And I actually prefer the 6th edition. The 7th edition, they tried to uh, bring in a whole bunch of stuff that was missing from the original. And when they did that, they ended up leaving a few things out as well from the original. And uh, it's a long story. But anyway, um, it's the published teachings of the Golden Dawn by Rigardi. Um, he didn't have... He was... Yeah, I don't want to get into a whole lot of stuff. But... Um, <laughs> Regardi had a lot of materials and he published them. Uh, well, that's the complete. So this that's the, complete, the next one. This is a different one. This is the complete yeah. Golden Dawn System of Magic. This is the hardback edition, um, which is not currently available unless you buy a used one. Yeah. Um, the new one is actually called, there's a slight title difference. This is the complete Golden Dawn System of Magic. The new one is called the complete, the portable complete Golden Dawn go. System of Magic because they shrunk the size, I think is why they renamed it that. Um, here, hang on, hand that one back. This one? Yeah. So this guy is huge. Regardi published this in the 80s. Um, it's a pretty big tome. I don't know how many pages. 
Oh, uh, it's broken into sections. Yeah, it's huge. So the page numbers don't matter, but it's it's well over a thousand pages, I think. Um, this is a huge book. A lot of the book that a lot of the materials Rigardi found after publishing the originals in 1938, he put in here. There's a lot of crossover material. Some of what's in the other book is in here, but a lot of what's in here is not in the uh, in the other in the other book. We call this one. So we call the other one the black brick. We call this one the black doorstop. Um, so. Anyway. There's a silver and a gold version. That's the gold. Uh, Sean mentioned this one earlier. The Light yep. Extended. A great book. There is going to be another... Edition book. coming out sometime. Yeah, edition coming out sometime soon. So keep your eye out for that. And then... There might be a couple of us writing on that as well. One of the other uh, books I recommend... Uh, let's see. So uh, we've got The Essential Golden Dawn. Self-Initiation of the Golden Dawn Tradition, The Golden Dawn by Rigardi, The Complete Golden Dawn System of Magic. Probably the last one I would recommend just in an off-the-cuff mm. set here would be um, By Names and Images Yes. Uh, by Peregrine Wild Oak. Uh, this Excellent. book goes beyond the what and goes into the why and what happens. Um, so he analyzes a lot of the basic rituals mm. that are done in the Golden Dawn and says, okay, so you're doing this, this is what you're doing physically, and we all know this. We've read it in how many books, but here's what's happening energetically behind the scenes. This is what's going on. So if you are, uh, if you are a solo practitioner, you don't have a temple nearby. That book has a lot of the types of things in it that you would learn in a temple. Um, there's a lot more than that, but it definitely is starting you on that path. So I definitely highly recommend that. That's probably my five. My five big ones for that. I have two others. It gets okay. once you've been in for a little while and you start to make your own uh, Golden Dawn tools. These are absolutely essential. Although um, they're not available like that anymore. They're not available. It's, it's a single book <laughs> single again book now. called uh, the Ritual Using Crafting or something. Mm. They combined them, but these books are absolutely essential when you do finally get into making your own tools with regard to traditional Golden Dawn work. Secrets of a Golden Dawn Temple. That's it. So these two books, so this is uh, Creating Magical Tools, and it goes into literally the process, step-by-step uh, -step directions for building a lot of the Golden Dawn tools, and then Ritual Use of Magical Tools goes into how to use a lot of them. Um, these have been combined into a single book now called Secrets of a Golden Dawn Temple. Jennifer, you were asking what the last book was. It was uh, By Names and Images by Peregrine Wild Oak. And, we'll and put a, a link. when we post this on the page, yeah. there will be a link to all those books uh, in the comments uh, directly beneath it. I didn't know if you wanted to bring up that one. Eh, I th let's keep it short for today. We, we can go into more. But yeah. My whole bookshelf is full of Golden Dawn books. We have tons of them. We'll probably, start, we'll probably do some book reviews on a lot of stuff, but... Um, so there's, there's my five, mm. I'd say. I, I concur with those. And again, uh, the Ciceros are fantastic with their information on Golden Dawn work and magic, too. So definitely look them up. Ken says the book's your mirror image on your screen. Well, I, I can't help that. The <sighs> Darn camera flips it. it around. Ay, ay, ay. That's okay. We'll put some links down below. You're always complaining, Ken. Never satisfied. <laughs> Never satisfied. <laughs> um... So what else? We try to keep these, we want our daily dose to be short, sweet, to the point, kind of overall generalized topics of a thing um, until people start telling us that you want something a little bit deeper, a little bit more, and then we'll do that. But for now, um, if there are any other questions, just let us know, comment, and um, share for our chance to win uh, one of two items. So we will be giving away Gold two Gold Golden Light bracelet. shineth in the darkness bracelet with it's the golden It's mirror eye. image, though. Ken. It's the mirror image. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whatever are we going to do? This is the mirror image, too. It but is. it doesn't matter because it's the same <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, um, so if you want to get one of these or you want a chance to get one of these, um, comment on the video and share it. Uh, we can Love see. Love it, too. Like it. We can see who shares. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we'll be able to do that. And on Monday's show, We'll take everybody who did that and put their names in a hopper and draw for those. Yeah. So we will. You don't have to be present Monday. to win. No. <laughs> you just have to share. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's it. That's well, all I have for today. That it? 
We've met with a lot of people here in the Phoenix area discussing Golden Dawn work and Golden Dawn magic, so hopefully we got uh, a couple people on here who were looking for a little bit more in-depth information without going through a whole application process, but if you are interested in some more order work or looking for new resources on where to look for a good order to join, we can um, put one of those below as well. Sounds good. Yeah, buddy. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with another Daily Dose. What are we talking about? I don't know. Ooh, what do we want to talk about on Monday? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll post it probably tomorrow uh, on the page what we're going to talk about. So Tuesday, we might be live on location from somewhere. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Have something fun planned. So we'll see what we can do on Tuesday. But for Monday, let us know. Comment below what you want to talk about uh, for Monday. Maybe some divination. Yeah, we'll, Luna, see. we'll see. All right. All right, guys. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Keep it magical.